Hey everybody, welcome to the Red Zone. Sean Brown, Michael Johnson here. It's time for College Football Week 10 Picks. But before we get started, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Like the video, leave a comment. Always hit that notification bell. You'll know every time we upload a new video. And go check out Odds Jam, link in the description. Uh, everything you need if you're a serious sports better. All the teams, all the sports books around the country, you're going to want Odds Jam. All right, Week 9, some surprises there. Yeah. I think North Carolina drops two in a row, losing to Georgia Tech. Yeah. Uh, I think that one's one. Uh, USC just survives Cal. Yeah. I mean, 50-49, that yeah. one was ridiculous. Um, I, I should have taken Cal. I'm not, I'm not taking <laughs> USC anymore this, this year. Yeah. I'll just, I'm giving them the Colorado treatment. I'm, I'm, just, I'm picking against them every, yep. every week that so. we pick their games. Um, so uh, some other ones. Ohio State did beat Wisconsin pretty decently, twenty four ten. Interesting about that is when we picked it at the opening lines, it's thirteen and a half. So if you picked Ohio State, you covered. Yeah. But later, if you waited till kickoff, it was fourteen and a half. And if you took Ohio State, yeah, they covered cover. by half a point. Half a point. Yep. Thirteen and a half when it opened, and then to win by fourteen. I mean, yeah. Man, what an opening line! That Thank was. goodness for Travion and Henderson's thirty three yard run that put him over the. Yeah. You know, over there. So uh, there were some other great games uh, to talk about. I will say, so OU <coughs> loses to Kansas this week, and it's rough. And and um, I I think I I do wear these colors after every loss. I want you guys to know I'm not a fair weather fan. I'm going to support them. You know, even through their losses. Yeah. But um, that was a tough game, and and Kansas <coughs> deserved it. I felt like they played. They were the better team. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to make any excuses. Um, I, I'll give some context, like when we talk about Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, um, but they just got outplayed, outcoached. Uh, if you watch this show for the last few years, you know I'm a huge fan of Lance Leopold. Um, he's just a heck of a coach in, in Kansas. Start up in that contract because it's going to be tough to hang on to that guy. <laughs> and speaking of contracts, uh, I, I don't want to talk about it too much because – People just say I'm a hater, but things are not looking good at Michigan right now. Yeah. And Jim Harbaugh, they rescinded the offer for yeah. what would have made him the highest paid coach. So yeah. That's been rescinded. Listen, get on Man. social media and every single Michigan fan on there, it just, to me, delusional. They act like there's no evidence. Nothing happened. This is a conspiracy. Like, this is fake news. No, it's not. Yeah. There's so much evidence there, there that, of what's going on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and now they know. I mean, they, 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 the NCAA investigators downloaded the computer where all this footage was uploaded, and they have where all these different coaches logged in and watched it. They can't argue this was a one man right. going rogue, and the money had to come from somewhere. Yeah. The guy wasn't paying out of his own pocket for those tickets. And I want to know. I want to know what's up with the the manifesto this guy wrote or yeah, what? <laughs> like I don't know. manifestos usually are written by psychos, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, so nobody who writes a manifesto. In history, has yeah. turned out to be a really well, good Well, and the person. last one that just came out just a little bit ago was uh, now this whole thing at Michigan involves the ball boys. So apparently, Man. you have ball boys on other sides of the field who are keeping track, and they're hearing what I, what teams are saying and relaying it back. And I don't know oh, if wow. that's true or not, but that's the latest that's come out. I mean, it's just one thing after another, and I mean, it's, it's not looking point, good for Michigan. It's getting to the point where it's like. Man, you hear anything, and and it, it could be true. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it very well could be true. Yeah. But, man, so that's, that's I, tough. It's that's shocking. Tough. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, week 10, you ready to get started? I think so. Okay. We've got uh, Rivalry Junior Week coming up, I yeah. call it, because yeah. we've got Alabama LSU, o, OU OSU. Yeah. Um, I don't know how big of a rivalry NC State and Miami is, but we've got some really good games coming well, up. And it, and if you look at the top ten with Oklahoma there at ten, they're not out of it yet because right. Oklahoma st or Georgia still plays Alabama most likely. You have Ohio State, Michigan still have to play. Michigan, Penn State still have to play. You have if they were to win out, OU and Texas play again. One of those two is getting knocked out, and so Florida State's really the only team that's sitting there pretty yeah. pretty because they have a pretty easy schedule to finish yeah. out the season. But everybody else is pretty much in it. There's the, a chance. And the only way I want to make the CFP, if that's even possible. I mean, you, yeah. some stuff, some chaos would have to happen, but is if OU gets the players back that they're, they're kind of slowly losing some key yeah. pieces week in and week out. Yeah. I mean, they they lost Gentry Williams, uh, Danny Stutzman, Tawi Walker went out after mm -hmm. rushing for, you know, over 100 yards. And so, man, I, I don't want to make the CFP this year if we don't get those guys back. Well, I mean, honestly, for Oklahoma, let's say they went out 
and then those other teams play. I really, I really truly believe the high state's going to beat Michigan this year. Yeah. So I think you have Georgia, Ohio State, Florida State, and then really the only thing that would keep Oklahoma out is if Washington wins out yeah. or Oregon wins out and gets that spot with the one loss because really they, they would have probably right. a, more, a, a better win well, it, it and would a better be, schedule, a stronger it, schedule. It would be the template for, for <laughs> SEC getting two teams in right. you know, every year is, is yep. – one team loses uh, and then doesn't make the the championship, but their only loss was to that one, you know, mm-hmm. team that ends up winning the conference and stuff. So, um, yeah, some crazy things need to happen. But, yeah. um, but and and I'm it not could be a, for it at this point. It could be a situation where, you know, Ohio State beats Michigan. Michigan's only loss is to Ohio State. Now yep. they're in there at that one loss with Oregon or Oklahoma. And yep. but I think I, I just don't think, I, I you know the CFP didn't put Ohio State in. When they lost to Michigan, yeah. so I, I just can't see the loser of that game getting in. Yeah, I just I don't think it would happen. Yeah, so. but um, I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Fifteen games. Uh, let's get started. First game. TCU is at Texas Tech. Texas Tech is a three point favorite. Texas. This is at Lubbock at six o'clock, seven o'clock Eastern time. So it's a night game. So and it's Thursday night too. Thursday night. Texas Tech always Man. plays good there at home in a night game, um, but. Look at the stats, look at the comparisons, and Texas Tech or, or TCU is just far and away on paper a better team in every single category. Um, Tech has managed to win a couple of games, but if you look at really what they've done in the last five games for each team, I don't think Tech is on the same level as TCU right now. Yeah, TCU's um, just had a rough past four games. I yeah, mean, they, they they've lost three out of their last four, and that was West Virginia, Iowa State, and Kansas State. So it's not like right. they're getting beat by Texas and Oklahoma and. Um, well, but those are still tough games. Those are yeah, not. You yeah, know, that's not. Houston, I would say the big, tw- and- the, the big twelve this year isn't by far isn't the best. I'm not saying they're yeah. the best conference, but. From top to bottom, I would say, uh, man, I would say they're they've got from from just the bottom team to the top, mm-hmm. they're really really tough. I mean, you struggle pretty much <laughs> with with just about everybody except yeah. for maybe BYU and yeah. Oh, there, there's a couple teams there that are pretty weak, but man, they've got they've got yeah. more teams than a lot of conferences that are that could give you some trouble. Yeah. You know. Texas Tech usually gets people trouble at home on, in prime time, no matter what. That's probably why they're a favorite here. But I'm taking TCU as the underdogs. I think I'm going to take. They're just a yeah, better team. I think I'm going to take TCU as well, even with losing. Because you know, Tech's lost their last two. They lost at BYU. They lost to Kansas State. They did give up a or, or put up a better fight against Kansas State, um, but they were at home there, and uh, TCU had to travel to, uh, is it Manhattan, um, mm-hmm. Kansas? So. Yeah, I'm going to take TCU. All right, next game, Wake Forest and Duke. Duke is a 12.5-point favorite. They lost to Louisville last week, didn't score a point. They were blanked, shut out, and Lance Leopold did play. I know he's kind of hurt. I think the injuries are just kind of starting to pile up for Duke. I, I think Duke. Riley Leonard. Riley Leonard. <laughs> You're thinking Kansas is coach, oh, Lance Leopold. <laughs> okay. Riley Leonard. He, yeah, yeah. He did play. They didn't score any points. It was just kind of um, – it was a bad night for them, but I think Duke, like I said, is kind of dealing with an injury bug right now. Yeah, and it's just you get to that point in the season, and you, if you if you can stay healthy, you keep winning. They've had some tough games playing yeah. Notre Dame, um, Florida State, and so I, I think they're banged up, and I just don't see them covering twelve and a half. I just don't. It's I got to take Wake Forest. It seems like a big spread, and and when you first look at Wake Forest and you see four four and four, well. Mm-hmm. Four of those losses, or all of their losses, have come in the last five weeks. So they beat yeah. Pitt two weeks ago, um, and then they lost to Florida State. They lost to Virginia Tech, uh, which was kind of surprising, and uh, lost to Clemson. Put up a fight against Clemson, <coughs> and then lost to Georgia Tech, who is just like every other week. They're yes. just they're a really <laughs> tough right. team to play. Um, and then Duke is like like we said lost their last two. Um, they beat NC State, who's been kind of tough. Yeah. Um, and then lost to Notre Dame. They beat UConn, forty one to seven. So um, this is a tough. Uh, I don't know. This is a Thursday night as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Wake Forest just because I don't think. I don't know with the <laughs> with the injuries with with Riley Leonard. 
Yeah. How's he going to be? Is he going to be 100%? I think it's the same thing as, as last week. Is yeah. Basically what we said was if he's going to play, is he going to be 100%? So, um, yeah, I'm going to take Wake Forest here. Okay. Next one, Ohio State, 18 and a half point favor at Rutgers. Um, this one to me, I'm taking the Buckeyes. Travion Henderson's back. He's a huge difference. When you have him being able to run the ball, that guy can hit the hole and just he's gone in yeah. no time. Uh, when you have that, that opens things up more for Kyle McCord uh, to throw the ball a little bit better. And then Marvin Harrison Jr., literally the best wide receiver in all of college football, might be the best wide receiver in all of football, period. Yeah. The guy's just unbelievable. He's a game changer. He should be a Heisman candidate right now in the top five. Um, it's a quarterback award at this point anymore. But he is, to me, he's the best player in college football this year. He just is. I mean, for everything he's done, and I'm not saying that because I'm a Buckeye fan. It's just, it's incredible what the guy has done. The guy's light years better than his dad, and we know how good his dad was in the NFL. So um, I'm going to take the Buckeyes. I know Greg Schiano, you know, he coached with Ryan Day, so he knows a little bit about offensively what the Buckeyes want to do. On the flip side, Ryan Day kind of knows what Greg Schiano likes to do on defense. It's a, it's a game of gamesmanship, but truly, the Buckeyes just talent-wise are far and above Rutgers. Yeah. And I, I think the Buckeyes go out and they win by 20. I'm trying to see here. Uh, so, um, Rutgers running back Kyle Monaguy, Mon- Monaguy? I, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but uh, he's he's a leading rusher for Rutgers. Um <laughs> He really good. I mean, a lot of people think that he's he's one of the best running backs in the country right now. Um, you know, what kind of game is he going to have? But here's the thing. Uh, I bet oh, that has less than 40 yards. Ohio State is holding teams to under 100 yards, 99.8 yards yeah. per game on the ground. So uh, if they can, I mean, the, these this note is going to kind of mirror the, the Bedlam game that we're going to pick here in a little bit. Um but if if they can if they can kind of keep him, you know, under 60, 70 yards. I Let's think revisit that... next week. I don't think he gets forty more than forty yards. Okay. The high state defense has just been unreal this year. Yeah. The high state defense is now up at elite level. The offense has fallen off. I'll take that. Well, I would rather in... have a top tier defense. Yeah. Than the so, best offense in college. And, and when you kind when you take away that key piece from from sort of a one dimension, I mean their their quarterback mm-hmm. can run too. Yeah. So I don't know how well this defense is at, at defending against running quarterbacks. They've been but, pretty good spying. But and... but he can run as well. Um, and we'll just see. I mean if they can if they can hold the running game to under you know a buck fifty, mm-hmm. uh, buck. 40 maybe, um, then I think that they have a really good shot at, at covering the spread. Because okay. you take a one-dimensional <laughs> offense and, and take away what makes them good, yeah. I mean, you've got a real good shot of, of covering there. So I'm going to take uh, Ohio State. Okay, Kansas State is at Texas. Texas is a four-and-a-half-point favorite. Quinn Ewers is still not playing. Uh, they managed to get the win last week. They covered last week. I didn't think they would, but it was a pretty big spread, and they managed to cover. Um you know, these two teams on paper are very evenly matched. This A lot of people in the media are calling this upset alert. You know how I feel about Texas, but in, in all honesty, I'm taking Texas to cover four and a half here. Yeah. At home it, especially. I, I wouldn't bet money on this one. Uh, Kansas State, I mean, really, it's kind of becoming both Kansas teams are starting to become yeah. a, a thorn in the side of, of Texas and Oklahoma. Um because Kansas State, you know, OU has struggled with them throughout the years. And uh, I saw a funny uh, tweet from, a, I think, College Football Reddit, Twitter or something. And it just said, OU and Texas shaking hands, getting away from the Kansas team. <laughs> Going <laughs> yeah. into the SEC. Um, so anyway, um, you know, with Malik Murphy starting his first game against BYU, had a decent game, but didn't blow, you know, yeah. anything out of the water. But that's the first game, and he's right. only going to get better. Yeah, I that's mean, true. So he um, probably will have a little bit better of a game. And he was a five-star quarterback coming yeah. out of high school, a uh, super talented kid. Um, he's not going to – I don't – I think I heard he's not going to be just this guy that, that runs all over the place, not a, not a crazy good runner, but a, a talented thrower. He's got a talented arm. So um, – Four and a half. Uh, I've got Kansas State marked here. 
I'm gonna I'll I'll switch and go with Texas. Are, okay. I don't like it, but I'll okay. I'll switch and go with I, Texas. I feel pretty confident in that pick, so I'm I'm gonna go with that. All right, Texas A and M is at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a three point favorite. Their offense is off the charts. The quarterback, um, forget his name now. You know Jack uh, uh Jackson Dart? Yes. He's thrown for like 18 touchdowns or something like that. Uh, 14 that, touchdowns, four interceptions, 2,080 yards. Yeah, 2,000 yards. So Texas A&M, I mean, they, they're just struggling right now, especially defensively. And I just I can't see Texas A&M stick, hanging with Ole Miss. I just don't, especially Ole Miss playing at home. I've got Ole Miss covering three. Yeah, Ole Miss beats LSU, Arkansas, Auburn, and Vanderbilt in their last four. Um, and, then, and they lost to uh, Alabama before Alabama. that. Um, and then A and M, they uh, they beat South Carolina, which everybody seems yeah. to be kind of beating up on them. Um, they lost to Tennessee twenty to thirteen, and they lost to Alabama yeah. uh, twenty six twenty. So in their losses, they've been they've been pretty close. But what what was it three? three. Um, it's very, it's I think close. that's within the realm of of, of of really good possibility. So I'll take Ole Miss. It's at home. Yeah. Um, Eleven o'clock game. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good about that one. Next one, Notre Dame, two-and-a-half-point favorite against Clemson. Clemson got demolished by NC State last week. They're 4-4. Four and four. Um, Dabo Sweeney made a comment about maybe we need to lose some games to get the people off the bandwagon. Well, and then I saw a meme where the wagon's broken. I mean, it's bad <laughs> at Clemson yeah. right now. They're not playing well. Yeah. This is all about – this This spread right now is all about what we've talked about in the past, about power rankings and how good Clemson should be, not how good they actually are. Notre Dame is for real. This is an easy cover by Notre Dame. I got them covering two and a half easy. Oh, yeah, I've got Notre Dame as well. Um, you know, we've heard that Cade Klubnik <coughs> has, has kind of found his stride, but then they go out and, and lose 24-17 to, to 17 to NC State. They lost that double overtime game to Miami. <coughs> um, they only beat Wake Forest 17-12. to 12. Yeah. Um, They did beat up on Syracuse at Syracuse. Uh, but you know Notre Dame's had a really tough schedule. They've yep. they've had well, probably the hardest schedule in in all of college football. Yep. Um, and so they're battle tested. They they've just they've been in it. They've been mm-hmm. through it. Um, they've lost some some pretty tough games. Some some games where they've had to battle. So I would say as far as as being in those really close games and being in that pressure situation. They're going to be able to handle that, I believe, a lot better than Clemson. So give me Notre Dame all, all right. day. Okay. Army is at Air Force. Air Force, 18 and a half point favorite. They are still undefeated. They're averaging 300 yards rushing per game, um, only about 88 through the air. <coughs> but, but they can still throw the ball when they need to. Way they better than the Army football. could. Right. Um, it's a big spread, but I'm taking Air Force. I mean, I'm taking them to cover the 18 and a half. Yeah, um, I'm going to take them as well. They have um, they beat Colorado State 30-13. They beat Navy 17-6. Beat Wyoming, who's pretty tough, 34-27. Uh, they beat San Diego State, San Jose State. I mean, they just they they just keep winning. And yeah. and Army, um, you know, I know they're they they've just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Um, this may be a pretty low scoring game. Just because of the propensity to run the ball, yeah. So the, that's the only thing that really worries me about the eighteen and a half. But oh, I think the over under on this was like thirty or something. I have it in the graphic. You can see it right yeah. there. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's but thirty I know, or thirty three. I know that uh, <coughs> Air Force is a lot more explosive than than Army is this year. They have the the ability to to go mm-hmm. with the home run plays, um, you know, in certain situations. So. Um, I don't love taking the 18 and a half, but a lot, but, but, but I know, am going to take it just to go win by 2024 20, and then we're like why didn't we take Air Force? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm yeah. sticking with Air Force. All right, next one, big one. Missouri is at Georgia. Georgia is a 15 point favorite. Listen, I thought Kentucky would hang with Georgia. They got completely demolished. Every time I go against Georgia, they just prove me wrong every bit. 15 seems like a lot. I know everybody wants Missouri. They're the underdog Cinderella story this year. Everybody'd love to see them go in there and beat Georgia. I just don't think ultimately it happens, especially if this game was in Missouri. I might give them. A, I, I would probably pick them to at least cover the spread. Going down to Athens, I, I just I can't. I'm going with Georgia. I'm going to take Missouri. Uh, yeah. Georgia, 
before last week was one five and one against the spread. Uh, then they did cover, so they're two five and one against the mm-hmm. spread. Um, but then Missouri, I think, has covered all but two games. I think that's what I saw yeah. on my list earlier. Um, so I'm going to go with it again. I'm going to go against Georgia again and just see <laughs> if I get lucky here. Okay. Um, I know I know Georgia's kind of hitting their stride, and maybe they cover the, the you know from here on out, but. Um, I just, I got to think, you know, with them not covering very well this year, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't see them covering two games in a row. And Missouri has the ability to, I mean, they throw the ball all over the place. They've got some phenomenal wideouts. Um, so I, I'll, I'm going to stick with Missouri here. Okay, next game. Um, Oklahoma is at Oklahoma State. This is the last Bedlam, at least for now, for maybe the in the future. For the future. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's at Stillwater. Um, Which I, I will tell you, technically, it's not the last bedlam. So bedlam started with wrestling. And, well, it's and, the last football bedlam for right, a while. Right. So yeah. uh, wrestling will continue yeah. to be OU in the Big Twelve. Big Twelve is going to keep OU's wrestling team okay. in that I conference. Didn't know that. Okay. And there's some other. There's some weird. There's like a northern uh, something team that's that's in there. There's a directional school that you've never even heard of that's yeah. that's in the Big Twelve wrestling. So. Um, well, as far as this one goes, we locked in at five and a half. It has ticked up to six. We are going to pick it at five and a half. I think it'll come back down. It's OU is favored um, in this one. Reality is Oklahoma State started the season in a, I mean, they were terrible. They were just terrible. And they yeah. were playing three quarterbacks. They didn't know what they were going to do. They have now settled on Alan Bowman. Um, he has been playing well. They've got a wide receiver. I can't remember his name. Over a thousand yards receiving already this season. Um, he's phenomenal. They can score quickly, they have a running game, they have everything they need. Oklahoma... You mean on, running back. You said wide receiver. They have, Ollie Gordon is a 1,000-yard rusher. Okay, that's Jalen Bray is their top receiver with okay. 340 I meant, yards. I meant 1,000-yard yeah, yeah. rusher. Yep. Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, they're getting it done in every single level. They can score quickly. This is a home game for them. The last bedlam, everybody's going to be fired up. But with Oklahoma, I'm a little, little, really concerned about their defense. I mean, you give up 39 to UCF. Turn around last week and give up 30, what was it 38 to Kansas? I think 38, so. 38, yeah. 33? Yep. Um, <coughs> sorry for the cough. Um, I just am not, I don't feel comfortable taking Oklahoma because I think Oklahoma State outright could win the game because of that offense, because they're able to get. Now, Oklahoma State's defense is not anything great either. It's, it's not. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, Oklahoma usually owns this series. It's more. It's not even really a rivalry to Oklahoma. It's more of a rivalry for Oklahoma State. But at the end of the day, I just feel like my gut tells me that the Cowboys might end up winning this game and give Oklahoma their second loss. So I'm going to take the Cowboys. So, um, so here's the context. Danny Stutzman goes out of the game. He's easily the best defensive player for Oklahoma. Gentry Williams, maybe the second best player on their defense, has been out with an injury for the last two weeks, mm-hmm. um, which really hurt them against UCF because UCF was able to <coughs> kind of throw the ball a little bit more. Um, and, and cornerbacks can come in and clean up some some run stuff. You know, they can get off blocks, get to those, um, those screen passes really quickly if they know what they're doing. Um, and then they lost Tawi Walker in that last, I believe in the fourth quarter, and then Javante Barnes, a guy that's barely played this year, has to come up, come in because Gavin mm-hmm. Sawchuk is the only other experienced running back who's out there. They were without Marcus Major. They're without some really key pieces that made this team what it was, yeah. you know, coming into these games that they've so, been struggling so with. So that tells me that Oklahoma's not quite ready to get to that level because they don't have the depth. Yeah. Because if, if so you have the they, depth, they, that's what they're building on. And if you listen to them, if you follow them at all during the off season, you know uh, that's one thing that Brent Venables was harping on was trying to build that championship mm-hmm. level depth. And they they had started to, and then some of those guys they have enough depth to where their twos can come in and give their ones some rest. Yeah, maybe for even a whole series. They don't have the the depth for their starters to start getting hurt and now yeah. their twos are starting to play the entire game. Yeah. That's there's they got to start elevating their threes now because So in comparison to yeah. Oklahoma, Ohio State up until last week had been without any of the running backs. They had a wide receiver playing running yeah. back and they, but he managed to get I mean they managed to get it done. Yeah. I mean it wasn't 
explosive run game, but it, it worked. Whereas, so it's all about having just the athletes on the bench. Maybe yeah. that's not their position, but you got to have somebody who can step in and play well, that role. Well, and two, if if Dylan Gabriel refuses to throw the ball down the field this game, they have no shot. I mean, Ollie Gordon, I believe that the defense can can take this one-dimensional offense and, and keep him in check. This is kind of the same thing I was yeah. talking about with Ohio State, is if they can keep him <coughs> under, you know, shoot, 100 yards, yeah. they have a really good shot at winning this game, and then Dylan Gabriel's going to have to spread the ball because Oklahoma State doesn't have a very good pass defense. Um their run defense isn't that great, but I think their pass defense is where they're more susceptible. So um, he's going to have to, you know, go back to the beginning of the year, and what made them good is spreading the ball around. They're without yeah. Andrella Anthony, but they still got Brennan Thompson, who they can use to stretch the field. They've got Nick Anderson who can stretch the field a little bit, Drake and, Stoops. and Drake Stoops. Yeah, they've got to be able to now start spreading the ball, doing what they did really well in the earlier parts before they played Texas. Because after the Texas game, I mean, it's been nothing but just... And they struggled a little bit against SMU, a little bit with Cincinnati. Um, they still won those games pretty handily. Um, I say that. SMU, I think they won by one score. But yeah. um, I'm going to take OSU in this. I think they keep it really close. I could see it a three-point game. And, you know, maybe even like the Kansas game, whoever has the ball last. Um, down to that. Kind of. Whoever has the ball last. Because OU had... You know, just a few seconds to try to go win the game at the end, but It'd be pretty awesome if the last bedlam went like three overtimes. I mean, it could. <laughs> it it could. very well could. I mean, there's that, like I said, there's. A, I'm not making any excuses because you got to have guys that, to step up in those positions. But um, context matters, <coughs> and I think those pieces that they're losing are big time pieces that yeah. that. And maybe with those the the twos that are having to be elevated to the one to fill in those gaps, you mm-hmm. know they get they get all the reps this week, um, because this is going to be a big game and and there's no surprise now with Oklahoma State. I mean you know what they're good at and yeah. you got to just go attack it. So, but I am taking oh, Oklahoma sure. State. Yeah. Okay. I was a five point favorite at Northwestern. Some a little bit of it won't be breaking by the time you watch this video. Uh, Brian Ferentz out at the end of the year. That was uh, just announced earlier right before okay. we started shooting he has not done it there he's done his offensive coordinator unfortunately for Iowa he's still there right now for the rest of the season yeah. so it's not going to get any Didn't better you say this week. he had to they had to score a so, certain amount of like points per game two three weeks ago it was at a point where they had to score average 23 points a game for the rest of the year for him to keep his job yeah and then they went out and scored like 10 and then it, it, now it's an astronomical amount like yeah. they can never never get it so he is out at the end of the year as part of an agreement that they had before the season. Which Kirk Ferentz, so, I mean, he's the most tenured yeah. college football coach. Since and, 99, I believe. And we yeah. saw Bob Stoops, you know, tell Oklahoma, yeah. keep my brother until he finds a job, and yeah. then just never really did. Well, in this way, and so the reason I put this in there, Northwestern has quietly got to four and four. They're two and three in the Big Ten West, and there's four teams above, and four or five teams above them, they're all three and two in the conference. So, Theoretically, Northwestern's not out of it yet. I mean, with everybody losing and beating everybody, I mean, Northwestern actually, if they won out, has an actual shot at winning the Big Ten West. Who would have thought that with um, with losing their coach before the season, how they started? I mean, they're winning every other game, so uh, So, they just just beat Maryland in this last game, so. This is a home game for them. You know, Iowa, you know, they lost that heartbreaker to Minnesota where, I mean, the punt return that wasn't because it was supposedly a fair catch, I... I don't know which way to go weird, with that. That was weird. That was really weird. So um, just pointing at the ball. He's just yeah. pointing at the ball. Yeah. Like that's it. He's not telling his guys to get. He's just pointing at the ball. That was a weird. I'm going to. I'm just. I'm taking Northwestern as underdogs hmm. at home. Um, I just think they've. They've. They're starting to gel. You're starting to see some chemistry with that team. Whereas Iowa, yeah, their defense is probably one of the greatest in college football. But man, their offense. You know, they can't get much done. They rely on the defense to score. Um, Northwestern, you know, really, they got to just take care of the ball. Both teams, turn the ball over. Both teams have won three out of the last five. Yeah. Um, so, but Northwestern seems to, to win a game, lose a game, yeah. win a game. And then the games they're losing, I mean, they're losing pretty bad. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to take Iowa here. Yeah. I just think even with, you know, <coughs> the, the lack of scoring, lack of offense, um, I don't know. I just think that I, I just think they're better. 
All right, Kansas is at Iowa State. Iowa State is a two and a half point favorite. These two teams kind of on paper seem even, I guess you could say. Um, Kansas, what they're doing, they, they seem like they're hitting their, their, their stride. The chemistry's coming around. Bean is actually becoming like the starter. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's really taken over now. He's, pretty, he's very experienced. Yeah. I mean, when, when people say, you know, you lost to a backup, I mean, he played a lot last year. Yeah. And he's played a lot this year. I mean, he's, he's like you said, basically their starter at this yeah. point. I mean, and they still have um, Jaden Daniels. Jalen Daniels. 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 Um, you know, on the sideline, given, the, given him, um, you know, he's just always in his ear. Um, which that's what you'd expect a leader yeah. to do. But um, as far as this one goes, I just think we, we, it just seems to be a common thing in college football this year. There's so many teams that have these big wins, and that's just a major letdown the following week. And I kind of feel like going yeah. into Ames, I, I'm going to take Iowa State cover two and a half. Originally, I was going to pick Kansas, but the more I think about it, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that was the high of highs beating Oklahoma. Yeah. Throwing, you know, all the fans throwing the goalposts in the lake and all that stuff, which I still don't understand tearing don't up understand. your own crap. You're getting I don't the, get that. You're getting the fine for storming the field, which is yeah. uh, what? $100,000. $100,000. And then now you're costing the program more money. Two two goalposts. Uh, not just one. They took both of them? That's a lot. Yes, they took both down. Oh my gosh. So That's I don't the I don't thing. get that. I didn't understand it when Tennessee did it. I don't understand it now. Why tear up your own crap? If anything, storm the field at the opposing team's place and tear down their goalpost. But yeah. doing it at home, just that's just man, weird. Why? It's so, just weird. I've anyway, never understood I'm taking it. Iowa State at home. Yeah, I, I originally I do want to take Kansas because is this a confidence booster? I mean, yeah. they're now six and two. They're bowl eligible. Um, I, and I just look at last week. UCF played Oklahoma to the wire. Yeah. Turn around and weren't, it wasn't even close with West Virginia at home. Yeah. Like they just they were spent last year. Remember last year when Oklahoma State beat Texas in that just dogfight shootout? Yeah. And what they do? They just they they were laid down. They were dogs the rest of the year. Yeah. So and Iowa State's won their last three, mm-hmm. um, 27 to 14 against TCU, 30 to 10 against Cincinnati, and 30 to 18 against Baylor. Um you know, some competition there, and, and you could definitely say that Kansas' last three weeks have been a little more tough than yeah. um, Iowa State. Uh, actually, four weeks, because they played Texas, UCF, uh, Oklahoma State, and OU, um, Kansas that being. But, um, man, I don't know. This could go either way. I I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to touch this one um, betting-wise, but... Uh, I'm gonna stick with Kansas. I say this is a this is a, a pretty big confidence booster. Their defense played so much better than they've played all year long, um, and and I don't know. I just I have a feeling Kansas will just keep that going, um, and kind of spoil the little uh, win streak that Iowa State's on right now. Next one, BYU is at West Virginia. West Virginia ten and a half point favorite. BYU got beat down in Austin. Now they got to go on the road to Morgantown. West Virginia's just been. A big surprise in the Big 12 this year. They, they've they played much better than I think anybody expected. Um, they're, they're just a good football team. I'm not going to pick against them anymore. I got I know 10 and a half is a big number. I'm taking them to cover 10 and a half. Yeah. Um, man, in this this one's kind of hard because uh, BYU, I mean, they're, they're another one of those teams that are winning one week, <coughs> then they lose the next week, they win one week. Um, uh, West Virginia, you know, they beat UCF, but they lost to Oklahoma State 48-34. to Houston, they lost at Houston 41-39. So in their losses, they're still competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, in BYU's losses, they lost 35-6 to against Texas, 44-11 uh, against TCU, and then they lost 38-27 to against Kansas. So um, when they do lose, they lose big. So I will take... West Virginia in this. I think they are the better team, even though both teams are five and three. Um, yeah. But but I just I I gotta take West Virginia. Big one. Washington three point favorite at USC. Give me Washington all Washington. day long. Washington's going to score eighty points in this I, game. I'm I not. Mean, I'm not taking USC no, anymore. That defense <laughs> just, is beyond bad. I'm Lincoln taking... Riley was gone for a whole week. Yeah. Um. You know they beat Cal fifty to forty nine. Yeah. I mean they survived. 
Washington is far beyond anything that what USC has seen this yeah. year. So I, there's no way that I would... Now, USC will score some points. Well, yeah, um, they'll score. And Caleb Williams will do Caleb Williams things. Um, but... But this one, I, to I me, just, I this is it. like Washington wins 63 to 35. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I see. I, I just don't see USC's defense being able to corral no. that offense. Um, and and this is probably, it could get ugly. This game and the Notre Dame game are my most confident picks this week. Okay. I just think that the, it, it's a no-brainer. It's a lock. I don't even know why the spread is just three. I just don't get it. But whatever. That's fine. Okay, let's move on. It's because you got a you got a a, a contending Caleb Williams Heisman Trophy winner on the other side of the ball. Yeah. Okay. LSU is at Alabama. Alabama is a three point favorite. Alabama has not looked great, but they just continue to win. I mean, they had their loss to Texas. They had their freak game against South South Florida, and then they just kind of went on a roll after that. They beat Ole Miss. They beat who they're supposed to beat. I still think they're going to win the West. Uh, LSU. Man, they are hot and cold. They yeah. they they can score on offense, but man, their defense is just it's non-existent. It's just like USC. Yeah, they're um, giving up almost 400 yards uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> of defense. They're giving up 156 on the ground and 238 uh, yeah. through the air. There's no way. I've got Alabama covering three. I've got Alabama as well. Alabama a little bit more tested in the in the prior weeks. They played mm-hmm. Tennessee, beat them 34-20. Um, they did struggle with Arkansas um, at home, uh, yeah. but they beat uh, Texas A&M 26-20. Um, and then LSU just got kind of a a, a tune-up <coughs> game with Army this last week, and yeah. they did beat them, uh, or was it? No, it was two weeks ago. So they got the bye week. They got a tune-up game and then a bye right. week. So, so do you, is there some rust nah. there? I mean, do you So think- here's, here's what I think. I, I know people love bye weeks. I don't. Here's what here's what I don't like. Oh, both teams had bye weeks. Okay, so here's here's the thing about bye weeks. If you got a lot of injured players, that can help get people healthy. But what I don't like about a bye week is if you're winning and you're on a roll, that can stop the momentum. Yeah, look because at OU. Look, OU is a great example. <laughs> Even I I still I, I don't like to talk about them, but Colorado, given where they're going, yeah, when they got to their bye, he gave them a whole week off. Why? I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. You got so much to work on. Why would you give them a, a week off? Right. So I, I, but that being said, bye weeks can hurt you more than they can help you. If you've got the chemistry, you're on a roll, you're winning, things are going good. You don't want that break. You just don't want that break. Right. Because the you can lose the chemistry in a week. You let the players go. If you don't practice, you bring them back, and who knows what the heck could happen. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's almost like the CFP. There could be 30 to 50 days between the, your last game and the New Year's Eve yeah. playoffs. Yeah. A lot changes in 30 to 50 right. days. Right, right. I mean, and you just aren't as sharp. Yeah. You know, and so I just, I, I don't know. I did, coming off of a bye week doesn't mean as much to me as, as I think some people think it does. Gotcha. So. Well, I'm going to take Alabama. Um, yeah. I just think the, the better defense is going to win this game, and I yeah. think Alabama's got that. Absolutely. Last one. Miami is a four-point favorite against NC State. NC State clobbered Clemson last week to the point where um, Steve Smith said NC State's just waiting for basketball season. Yeah. And their coach after the game said that he could kiss his ass. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's pretty funny. It you got to admit. Um, NC State's no slouch, but Miami, just look at the comparison at quarterback, at running back. I mean, the touchdowns, the interceptions, Miami's just on a different level. Yeah. The only way Miami loses this is if Cristobal just, I mean. Well, now here's the thing. I, Miami's last two games have gone <coughs> overtime with Virginia. True. They won that. And then double overtime against Clemson, uh, yeah, which they true. ended up winning. And then uh, NC State, win, loss, win, loss, <laughs> win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so... <sighs> Man, it's a tough one to pick, but I'm going to go Miami in this. Yeah, I'm going to pick Miami to cover four. Yep. That's our picks for week 10. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed, like the video, leave a comment. Always hit the notification bell. Go check out Odds Jam link in the description. And good luck. We will see you next week.